And then we have the old lactate profile thing where, you know, if you everybody has blood lactate in them. Everybody has lactate in their blood right now, about one millimole. So you have it all the time. So you're producing it all the time and you're clearing it all the time. It goes into your blood and blood goes, shifts it around to the liver and the liver converts it back to a carbohydrate fuel and the heart <coughs> muscle uses it as fuel, other muscle fibers use it as fuel. So you're always clearing lactate and you're always producing it. Now you, you, at rest, you're going to have a little bit of lactate in there and you're clearing it as fast as you're producing it so it's way down here. And you start running and it doesn't go up. What we measure in your blood is the accumulation of lactate, not the production of it. And if you produce more as you start to run, but you clear it faster, then the accumulation doesn't go up at all. And that's what happens. And it, it, but eventually, at some point, as you go a little faster, you can't clear it as fast as you produce it, so you start getting a much steeper curve here. We talk about there being a threshold in here somewhere, your lactate threshold. Your lactate threshold is the speed of running where you're producing lactate and clearing it just as fast as you're producing, but it's elevated in a steady state. If you go any faster, it'll start going up. If you go any slower, it'll start going away. So there's, a, there's an amount that, that stays there. And that's a very, very good measure of endurance. To, to, what you'd like to do is, I tried to show with this picture here, you'd like to shift your lactate curve off to this right side. Because if this is your threshold here, that's a certain speed of running. And if with training moves your threshold over to here, then that speed associated with the threshold is faster. You learn what you do when you, when you do threshold running is you increase your body's ability to clear lactate. So you can deal with a higher production by clearing more. And you, to do it, you have to work at that speed. To improve any physiological function in your body, you have to stress that function. You're not going to improve your endurance by going out and sprinting all out. You've got to run kind of hard. Anybody can race at their threshold for about an hour. That's the speed you can race at. Rested and psyched up, you can race about 50 to 60 minutes. Swimmers have what they call a T50 test. They tell their swimmers to see how far you can cover in 50 minutes, and they count that as their threshold speed. And in, in running, I've had several runners that I'll say, this is your threshold speed, and they'll run a 10 mile, and they'll run it right at that speed, right at 50 minutes to an hour. And when you train threshold training, you should be training at a speed that you could keep up for 20 or 30 minutes. I'm saying in a race it might be 50 or 60 minutes, but in training, you ought to, anytime you're doing a threshold workout, you ought to be able to answer this question. Maybe you're doing, there's two kinds of threshold workout. One is a steady tempo run, where you go for maybe 20 minutes steady at this pace. And another would be a cruise intervals. It's a term I borrowed from swimmers, they use that term a lot, cruise intervals. And that means to, to run at threshold pace, for maybe five or six minutes, take a short break and repeat it a bunch of times. Like it might be six times a mile in running with one minute breaks. And there's benefits for both kinds of threshold training. The benefit of the steady 20 minute run is mostly mental, or it's additionally mental because now you're learning to hang on for 20 minutes at a pretty hard, you're working at about close to 90% of your max heart rate, about 86 to 88% of your VO2 max. That's threshold pace. Now, if you're out there to do six times a mile at threshold pace, you ought to be able to answer this question to yourself. Could I keep this up for 20 or 30 minutes? And if you don't think you could, you're going too fast. I'm saying run the slowest you possibly can to get the benefit you're after. And you get the benefit of threshold running by running at threshold, not beyond it. And it's the same with interval training. You get the benefits of interval training by running at your VO2 max, not beyond it. And I'll show you a good slide on that in a minute. Here's, so here's the, thing, here's the things you want to do to improve your velocity at VO2 max. Here, let's say this is your economy curve, and this is your max, and this is your VO2 max. You could just improve your max, and that would improve your VO2 max. Or you can improve your economy with the same max, and that would improve your VO2 max. Or you can improve your economy and your max and you'd be way over here. And that's what counts. Because that's the 
thing that determines how fast you can run any race. What's your velocity of you can X? So what are, the, what are the purposes of training? One is to increase the available energy that you have. And the way to do that is to change, make changes down in the muscle cells, more mitochondria that will deal with the oxygen that comes in there. The oxygen comes from the blood and the vessels, so you open up more vessels. So more blood is delivered and more oxygen is delivered. And the mitochondria get increased in size and increased in number. So they're, they're capable of dealing with more oxygen that's being delivered. So there's two factors in aerobic metabolism. One is central and one is peripheral. Central being how much can your heart deliver in terms of blood and oxygen. And peripheral is how much can those cells utilize how much is being delivered. So either one of them, and running easily improves both of those things. You know, when you're running at about 60 to 65% of your max, that's not very hard. That's slower than marathon pace. When you're running at that speed, you're benefiting big time and down in the cells. Those mitochondria are building in them. And everything is building. So you, there's purpose for easy running. You know, when your heart, when you start running, when your heart rate, you keep, as you run faster, your heart rate keeps going up and going up. But when you get to about 60 or 65% of your max heart rate, your stroke volume plateaus. Stroke volume being how much blood is being pumped with each beat. How powerfully is your heart beating? Your heart is beating as powerfully as it's going to beat when you're at about 60 or 65% of your max heart rate. It's not going to beat you more powerfully. It's going to be more often, but not more powerful. Well, you can develop that muscle by having it beat hard. You don't have to make it beat fast to develop it. You don't do that, but because if I said, we're going to work on building and strengthening our heart, and you go out and run as hard as you can, you might last 10 minutes. But if you out and run easy, you might last for an hour or two. And that's a whole lot better for your heart. Strengthening your heart, it's, it's a function of time, not intensity. You want to improve speed and power, that's with repetition running, fast, uh, with lots of reps. Improve economy, that's repetition running. Improve endurance, that's threshold running. So you got different kinds of running that develop different physiological. Here's what they look like. 